Hello, I'm here. Let's get this started. So hi there. Hello and welcome to Accent Origin Weekly Writing Web Show. My name is Brendan. This is my show. What's going on, guys? What is going on? It's a lovely Sunday afternoon. This is after 12. Um, so yeah, I uh, just wanted to give you guys some quick updates about uh, what's going on in the next little while. Um, we are, uh, yeah, so I regularly schedule, blah, 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 blah. I regularly stream on Sundays. Uh, next weekend, I will be at a convention all weekend, so I will not be able to stream. That being said, uh, I'm going to stream Friday morning and Tuesday at the regular time. So not one, but two makeup streams. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to stream Friday morning. Probably for probably only for like two hours or so. But I will stream. Because um, <clears throat> then I got I to gotta go travel downtown to go do some stuff. But uh, yeah. There's that. Uh, and then... Um, the Monday after Victoria Day here in Canada, we'll be finishing up uh, The Black Company by Glenn Cook on the Rewrite Podcast. Um, so there's that as well. And then, yeah, then the Tuesday. So that'll be on Monday. And then on Tuesday, I will be uh, streaming again at 12 p.m. Eastern to uh, to make up for the missed day. Um, but, yeah. We're uh, we're kind of in a state of flux here um, on Accidental Origin. <clears throat> For those who don't know, those who are new or uh, who haven't been here in a long time or whatever, uh, this is a writing stream. <laughs> uh, I don't know how you ever could have guessed spending any time with me that this is a writing stream, but it is. The thing about writing streams is that they are not necessarily the most interesting thing to watch. <laughs> and I admit that. I'm a writer, and I don't always find them the most interesting thing to watch. So, um, me and a few of my friends here on Twitch... Oh, hi, Sheeps! ...have been uh, discussing ways to boost viewer engagement on a writing stream. Uh... Because yeah, we want we want engagement. We want uh, we want to interact on a level that we don't necessarily interact at this point. <clears throat> so the next little while, uh, probably the next because I don't stream very much. Probably the next m couple months, I'm going to be doing. Uh, a lot of different things than I normally do. Uh, I'm going to be trying to mix it up. I'm going to be trying to see what works for us. Right? Hi, Link. What's up? Thanks for that follow, dude. Are you just getting off work? <laughs> But yeah, so that's that's the plan. It's going to be a state of flux. We're going to have a lot of weird conversations uh, about writing, about life, and how life relates to writing, um, things like that. <laughs> oh, I got you. That's cool. You you, ma you made him sheeps. I don't know if I believed you, Link. Sheeps is very persuasive. By very persuasive, I mean she yells at you two to do something. So, uh, to start off today's show, 
Uh, I am going to present a writing problem that I'm having with uh, the comic book project I'm working on with the awesome Shimandru art. Um, let's get some shout out commands in here. Boom. Well, oh, that didn't work, did it? I got a new bot <laughs> that uh, I don't necessarily know how to use. Whoops. <laughs> uh, give me one sec here guys I need to fix this real quick um, parameters I mean, I totally said I wouldn't do this, but I'm immediately doing this. <laughs> All right. Okay. Where's Proud? I need to know how to fix this. If I do this now, will it work? Hey Erica, what's going on? I immediately messed it up. Is it fixed? Hmm. 
Yes, I fixed it. No, I didn't fix it. Try again. No. Uh, damn it. <laughs> oh well, I'm not gonna worry about it. There'll be no shout outs today. My best my bad. Okay. Uh <laughs> Yeah, I know, Erica, but I'm not using Nightbot. Nightbot's command structure is different. Because uh, that's originally what I had. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'll have to figure it out later, though, because otherwise I'm just going to end up sitting looking at documentation for like 20 minutes and that's not helpful <laughs> so yeah uh i'm gonna start off with talking about a story writing problem that i've been working on and uh we can talk about it and then we can talk about some other stuff and just talk about things in general um so yeah Bum, bum, bum. Cool. So, uh, for those who don't know, I'm just going to type this out this time. Uh, for those who don't know, I am working on a comic book project with the awesome Shmandrew Art. I just posted his Twitch link there in the chat. Um, and uh, I am working on issue number three right now. Uh, I've sort of... Uh, thanks, Sheeps. I've... I've oh, how do I describe it? I've worked through issue number two. That's all planned. I just got to type it up. Uh, issue number one is well done uh, beyond that point <laughs> uh, like I've done the final version of it uh, so I'm working on issue number three and I'm getting to this point so our main character Matt is kind of walking towards the dam um, from the first issue now, he was new to the dam when he got there, and he hasn't been there in a few days because he got a bunch of stuff happened to them, which I'm not going to go into too much detail uh, to avoid spoilers and all that kind of stuff. But he's walking towards his dam, and then he gets to the dam gate, and I can't figure out what I want to happen then. I know that he has to get inside the dam. But I can't figure out if he could potentially sneak in with emergency vehicles going through, if he could uh, sneak into the bushes. I'm not even convinced that he needs to sneak at all because he does technically work for their company and has worked at the dam. He just doesn't have a proper key card to get in. Um, so could he convince the security guard to let him in? And I'm trying to figure out like what what's the most effective way to get him there, like the most interesting storytelling way. Obviously, uh, the way in my head was that he slips into the bushes, but it just it doesn't make any logical sense. So I'm trying to figure it out. Uh, I need a pen. Pen. Desk dot big face. So yeah, um, that's kind of my problem here, and I'm and I'm.
try to figure it out. <laughs> so what do you guys think? What do you guys think makes sense? Uh, what do you guys think works as as a form of this sort of storytelling? Presenting a problem. Oh, and this this is this is like notes for later. This is like a giant wood spar from work that you're used to hold pallets together. <laughs> he just needs to get in. Um, and I can't figure out the right way to get him in because I, I was struggling with the logic of it, of the logic of him sneaking in unnecessarily. Like he's a normal person. He should be able to just kind of walk in. He doesn't have access to any of those things, Sam. He has no access to a plane. He has never skydived before in his life. <laughs> and underground boring machines cost about uh, $2 billion more than he can afford. Nor can you get them on a moment's notice. So yeah. Cuz like I'm kind of thinking I don't know. I've been trying to kind of create a problem in which there's something that happens with the gate that doesn't let him in, so he has to sneak in, and I'm just, like, it's just so weird in my head. <laughs> Sheeps is a cool kid. Who knew? Yeah, and, like, that's the other thing, is he should have an ID badge for the company because he works there. Um, I, I was tempted to make it so that he lost it, but I don't think that makes any sense either. Like, I mean, it's totally logical that he could have lost it. I just felt like it was me trying to force an outcome and trying to force an outcome in storytelling just sucks. It doesn't feel good. <laughs> um... Well, it's not even about permissions and all that. Like, he's not doing something he's not supposed to be doing. Like, and and that's and that's why all of the sneaking in and all that stuff doesn't sit right with me because it's there's no reason for him to need to do that when he legitimately can go into this facility. <laughs> he works there. He's not not allowed there. He's just. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's it's this weirdness of me trying to force an outcome right so yeah let's pull out a new page here it's so, like he needs to get like like goal i'm gonna write down goal and let me know if you guys want the notes big i can make them big um i can swap my camera around i just felt like this is gonna be mostly me talking so the camera should be bigger <laughs> ghost <fa> employees <laughs> into the faculty so that's the thing and that's part of um for those who don't know this is a fantasy piece so there's a lot of elements of through the veil fiction which is a type of fiction of seeing into the world that we can't see as regular humans so for example it's a the type of fiction where ghosts and wizards and werewolves and all that exists in regular society, but you can only see them once you've 
like one you can only certain people can see them sort of thing uh it's kind of the buffy phenomena of everyone just rationalizes it as something else even though it's it's monsters and all that because they're otherwise their brains can't take it sort of thing um it's the harry potter like you only see wizards when you're a wizard and have access to the wizardy things um it's the uh hellboy you know the the stuff that that only you can see or only certain people no, have knowledge of um so stuff like that so he i struggled with that decision sam of like do i make it so regular people can't see him or do i make it so that everyone can see him monsters and regular people included i ended up going with the latter because i wanted there to be interactions i wanted him to be able to interact with the normal world and i wanted that interaction because i felt like it would make him a more interesting character he would have to deal with this sort of all of the things he can normally do he can still do but he's always affected by this stuff that's happening to him from the from the other world of sorts i'm gonna write that down other world is cool the other world So his goal is to get inside the facility. Now, so, um, he hasn't worked at this dam for very long. In fact, his first shift is when the sort of incident happened that caused him to be able to see into the other world um so that that's important uh but he has worked for this company for over a year uh and the company is the hudson uh, i'm gonna write it down here it's the the hudson dynamic power it's called hudson dynamic power they basically supply uh, hydroelectric and nuclear power to uh, a municipal area of uh, about, we're going to say three towns, yeah, like three or four towns, one small town, like one small city or yeah one small city and one medium-sized city uh, and the medium-sized city is where this takes place it is I can't reveal the name of it yet to you but it is there um, <clears throat> So yeah, um, it's about that big. And uh, so he's worked for them for about a year. He was working at a different facility. He transferred facilities. So he will have uh, a company ID badge. Neo Tokyo. <laughs> yeah, everything takes place in Neo Tokyo, always. Or Neo something. Uh, one of... One of the worst, but yet the best Gundams is G Gundam, and G Gundam takes place uh, in an alternate future where all of these colonies, and Gundam is always about space colonies versus Earth. Uh, that's like the almost every Gundam I've ever seen is based in that sort of dichotomy. Uh, sometimes it's not always space colonies. Sometimes it's uh, things like people living on the moon or people living on Mars. But it's basically the same idea. So in G Gundam, there's all these space colonies. And all the space colonies are named after um, old countries in on Earth. And every so many years, all of those space colonies send a Gundam fighter 
to Earth to battle it out to determine who's the superior space colony. And yes, the moon is totally in space, but I was thinking, like, when I'm talking space colonies, I'm talking artificial space colonies, uh, whereas, like, the moon is a planetary body, right? Mars is a planet. It's not really a, a space colony in the same way that, like, creating an orbiting satellite is a space colony. But yeah, so in, in G Gundam, there's all, like, uh, Neo Canada and Neo Japan and Neo France and Neo Germany. Literally every single one of them is called Neo something and it's hilarious. Um, and they're also really ridiculous mechs, mech designs. Uh, things like uh, Neo Mexico is like a cactus with a sombrero and it's just terrible. <laughs> terrible sort of thing. So yeah, Matt, our main character, does have a company ID. Now, the magnetic strip on it doesn't work anymore because of all the static electricity that he's been put through, same as his phone doesn't work anymore because it's been static to death. So that's one thing. Now, the other part of it is... is this entrance that he's going to is meant to be somewhere you drive and his car is still at the facility because he didn't couldn't collect it when the incident happened. Neo America is too hamburger is an extra large coke. No, it's a cowboy boxer. <laughs> it's what it is. <laughs> It's like a cowboy with six shooters who, or it's like a gorilla with six shooters who turns into a boxer when they need it, when they need more, more effective melee uh, stuff. I could go for a Neo America right now, two hamburgers and extra large Coke. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, and the gate. Because I spent I spent some time doing research on uh, what dam gates look like, and a lot of them are just like I should have some photos here. Actually, I probably have some photos. Let's go to my reference folder here for the project. No, I don't. But I was doing some research on dams, and a lot of them are just like gates with a key card thing on the side that just lets you in. There's not even a security guard post or anything like that. Mine was supposed to be a security card post one because I kind of like that idea. I like the idea of having a security guard post. Um, I felt it matched my tone a little bit better. And it's not like certain ones of certain size do and certain ones of certain size don't. It's kind of a depends on what the facility is like and what the area is like and stuff. Um, so there's that for sure. So it's not really generally a place that you regularly walk up to. That being said, because there was because most of the dam has been destroyed and there's kind of emergency crews working on a ton of stuff, uh, it's very much a like there could be someone walking scenario. I don't think it'd feel that out of place to have someone walk up. They're like the security guard wouldn't be too weirded out about it. Is what I'm saying because there's probably a lot of people walking around as long as they have the proper ID to get into the facility. Right. So maybe I like, maybe I'm just totally overthinking it and he should just be able to get in the facility. Does that seem like a weird step to you?
Like, am I completely overthinking this? Because that is entirely possible. <laughs> okay. Yeah, like, uh, yeah, like maybe I'm starting to think that I would just, I'm just completely overthinking this. Like maybe all he has to do is show his ID at the gate and get in the facility. <laughs> Yeah, and I was also thinking that uh, I haven't planned a whole lot of issues 5 through 8 yet. Um, issue 4, I have the general plot for. I have a synopsis for it. But I haven't planned the whole, like, exactly what I want to do in issues 5 through 8. Though I have an overarching plot that I'm going to be moving through. So, there is a very distinct possibility that he could come back at a later time. Uh come back to the dam at a later time and then he could sneak into the facility or maybe I could just use all of the stuff that I was going to use for him sneaking into the dam and use it at a different place because uh, there is going to be a brewery and he's going to have to sneak into that at some point uh, actually sneak into that because he's not supposed to be there And that's a great question, Sheeps. Do you recommend writing a script for a comic versus just going with your imagine, aka wing it? Really, it comes down to personal preference. So, um, in my opinion, I have to write a script. Because I'm not an artist. I can't draw my own comic. I mean, I could. It wouldn't be very good. It wouldn't be the level of comic I'm trying to go for. Uh... For those who haven't seen it, I will post the um, Instagram link. For uh... so this is one of the main characters in the com in uh, mine and Andrew's comic. Strange to be on the door. That's. Uh, Rye and ele lightning elemental, right? I cannot draw something on that level. Not even close. Um, I am not the worst artist in the world. I would need a lot of practice to be at any sort of level to be able to draw a comic. So for me, get that flyer off screen. I was actually writing on this. I'll show you. I was, I was laying out comic pages on here. <laughs> It's just kind of there. But I can hide it, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, and and one of the... Um, for those who don't follow comic people on Twitch, but there's a few people who specialize in comics on Twitch, and I will literally write notes on anything. <laughs> like, look at this. This is a big cardboard spar that I have like notes on. I was writing this last night so I didn't forget. Um, <laughs> if you follow like uh, John Lee or uh, some of the people that he really likes like Mobius and all that, uh, they are very much in favor of building a world as you go. Of having kind of a driving force and and letting the story breathe and come out of it. I think web comics in general, because they don't have a finite end unless you're doing it as like specific issue by issue, are going to have very much that same feel of they're going to evolve over time. They're going to change. They're going to live. They're going to breathe. Your characters are going to come forward out of that. I know quite a few people in comics who will never write a script. 
they'll be sketching their own stuff. So they'll just make a short form outline and just go with it. Um, I know some web comics people who write full scripts, uh, especially the ones who are working in groups like a writer artist combo or anything like that. A lot of that'll be scripted, things like that. Um, the real answer is sheeps do whatever works best for you. And that sounds like a weird cop out answer, but it's legitimately the real answer because the only way that you're going to be able to work effectively on your comic is not by doing something that I say it's by doing the thing that makes it effective for you to get it done. And the only way to figure that out is to try it is to try different things. Uh, I've spoken about it a few times, um, that you, the few times that I, over the last few weeks of, uh, Anthony Johnson, who's the writer of, uh, Atomic Blonde, uh, he wrote a great article on process and that was the crux of his argument of like, The best process, the best process is the one that lets you write and write well and write quickly and whatever else. And the only way to find that process is to try a bunch of different things. Um, I think there's some things that a lot of people do and a lot of people that have found effective. And I think it's worth it to try some of those things first to see if they work, but they're not the only way. And sometimes a more inefficient way that provokes your brain positively is better than the most efficient way that provokes your brain negatively because it's about the process. It's about the way that things happen for you. It's not about the most efficient or inefficient way to do something. Um, and thanks Loveless. I appreciate, <laughs> I appreciate the compliment. Um, do I think there's a preference to web comics instead of printed books? Sort of. Um, personally speaking, I feel like web comics were bigger five years ago than they are right now. I think they definitely still have a presence. Um, and web comics are a great way to get your work out there, to get people interested in your work. Um, especially because print on demand has become such a better thing now than it used to be. So it's not that expensive to get your work printed for sale later. Um, I know a lot of web comics, what they'll do is they'll add extra stories to their print versions so that there's extra material for you to get in the print version, make it a little bit more enticing. Um, I think right now the biggest thing is actually somewhere in the middle it's it's digital versions of comics through services like comiXology um comiXology is really kind of like the amazon of comics actually they're owned by amazon now so that's like legitimately a thing um where you can release a traditional style comic book in a digital format and sell it along with all of the big name guys like Image and Marvel and DC and all that stuff on the same platform. And it still has that low overhead that digital like eBooks have. Um, and they're vastly rising in popularity. Uh, yeah, this stream brought to you by Amazon because Twitch is also owned by Amazon. Right. And, and you can kind of gauge where your comic is at and then maybe you can release trades of the issues or something later. You always have that option. Um, I think for you, Sheeps, I think I don't know this much that much about your serious project that you're considering. I know that a lot of the stuff I've seen you draw as comics is really more of a gag strip and I think would work really well with this sort of your, your web comic style. Um, <laughs> yes, all hail Jeff. Excuse me. 
so yeah, I think I think you have a lot of options. And I th- it's one of those things that, again, the answer is kind of, you should do the option that works best for the audience you're trying to reach. Personally speaking, print comics, unless they're by one of like the big... Well, like, let's say, I, unless they're by like the top seven to eight companies are not going to sell. They're not going to sell in large quantities. Um, So, you know, I think in that space, independent comics, like people don't buy independent, like physical comics all that much. I think digital comic sales are much higher in sort of the independence. And there are certain companies that do only digital that do pretty well. Um, Yeah. And that's not to say creator owned and all that doesn't do well. Um, Cause like image and dark horse and a few others who do do creator owned stuff are very much in the big name and do sell comics. Um, and then there are certain publishers that do like books, for example, drawn and quarterly out of Montreal, who's a really awesome comic book cult publisher. Uh, doesn't publish like traditional comic books. They really only do like trades and graphic novels and that kind of thing. Um, they're really cool, uh, but yeah, they basically do books, which is much easier for them to sell. Um, yeah, I've got a particular story that I want to make into a serious long-term story comic versus doing a novel with illustrations, which is something I thought about doing as well if the comic doesn't work out. <laughs> the gag strips are just me messing around. Yeah, um... I personally have never really read an illustrated novel. I know of a few of them, uh, most of which are by Neil Gaiman. (laughs) Uh, Things like Stardust. Uh, He did another one, I think, if I'm not mistaken, that was also... I'm trying to remember the name of... Oh, Oh, whatever, this will do. Um, I guess Coraline was a uh, illustrated novel, wasn't it? Maybe not. Uh, I'm not sure. I suppose it doesn't really matter. But yeah, Neverwhere was not an illustrated novel. Neverwhere was an actual novel, uh, which was a, <clears throat> adapted into a uh, BBC miniseries and a graphic novel. I could be mistaken, but I'm pretty sure I'm not. <laughs> I'm a big fan of Neverwhere. I like it a lot. Yeah, I don't know. There was something else he did as well. But yeah, I don't know a whole lot about illustrated novels, to be honest. The idea seems intriguing, almost like an adult version of a picture book. Um... But you'd have to, I think for something like that, you'd have to have a story. You'd have to use the illustrations in a way that that really enhanced the story. And I'm not sure, I'd have to try it. I'd have to figure out what's the best way to do that. Um, So I'm not sure. Long-term story comics are really cool. I've read uh, a few of them. I've read web comics of like 600 pages. Like there's a lot of cool, cool stuff out there.
Yeah, like the writing has to be strong enough that it's not the illustrations carrying it. But you want to have these like really strong illustrations that will like the way that I'm thinking about it now, it feels really weird to me that you'd have illustrations that would be basically things that you've written about. You'd almost want the illustrations to be separate from the writing. And what I mean by that is that you'd be telling your story kind of in the writing and then it'd be an illustration. And then the next part of writing would take place after that illustration. Like you'd almost use it like inserting a comic panel into the writing to give you a visual sense of this one specific thing and like move through it like that. In my opinion. Um, again, I haven't done a whole lot of research on it, but that's kind of the way that I'm thinking about it. That it'd be this sort of weird, like comic with writing almost. I don't know. I've never done something long term that was a repeated process for a comic, you know, which is why I thought of the illustrated novel. I feel like I couldn't mess up an illustrated novel as much as I could a comic. Uh, I don't know. I think in a certain level, storytelling is storytelling. And if you have a, an effective story, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> Um, like for example, I don't know how many people have read this. I know Sam has, but like the order of the stick has been on an ongoing web comic for like, I don't know, 15 years. Maybe does that sound right? Sam, I don't know how familiar you are with them. Let me see what's, what's on here. Uh, 2003, so pretty close to 15 years. And uh, it's literally slightly illustrated stick figures. But it's got such a nice style to it that it allows the storytelling, a lot of elements. Like it, It's got enough detail to give all the characters per distinct personalities, um, stuff like that. Uh, I'm reminded of Jeff uh, Lemire, who did, whose style is really weird and strange, but he does, it works and he uses it to his advantage. He's really good at using his style as part of his storytelling process. He does illustrations like this sort of thing. You know, like there's... Yeah, no, and, and, and Sheeps, this is exactly why I wanted this sort of format was that I want people to be able to just ask me questions and talk to me and, and have a discussion about writing, about what writing is, about what, you know, like what I'm trying to do. That's why I started it off with this sort of question of my comic, because, you know, it's a jumping off point. It's something that I need to solve, and it's also something that we can kind of use as a bridge into to a larger conversation. Um, so I'm going to answer your question, Sheeps, um, and then I'm going to take a break. Uh, but yeah, so do I think it's better to have a story that continues forever in a webcomic or a story to have a point eventually? I'm just picking your brain. I don't know. <laughs> I think I think it really depends on the story. I think that Okay, let's take manga for example. Manga is a good ver thing to compare in this sort of situation. The way that manga works is it's basically an indefinite ongoing with no end until it loses popularity enough that they decide the, that the publishing company no longer decides to continue producing it. So 
in that scenario, you end up with with stories like Bleach, like um, Hajime no Ippo, like Naruto, uh, you know, where the stories just go on and on and on and on forever, like for years upon years upon years. And those aren't even necessarily the longest running manga of all time. There's some that are a lot longer. I really like Hajime no Ippo. But there are many arcs in that series that I am not a huge fan of. <laughs> you know what I mean? And and you kind of have to add all these new characters and your cast gets bigger and bigger and bigger and all that sort of stuff. And if used effectively, it can be really, really, really satisfying. But at the same time, is not necessarily all that interesting all the time. So I think... I think the best way to look at it is to look at it as a story that grows. And as long as you have something interesting to tell, you should continue telling it. And then when that's done, then you can go on and like end it or do a spin off or do something different. Like I kind of feel like as you grow, your story will grow and the way that you approach it will grow. Um, and I don't think locking yourself into one specific thing is necessarily the way to go. I have seen web comics that function very well as like, this is issue number one and it does this, and this is chapter one and it does this. Um, so those are all, it's just about the way that you approach the storytelling. And when I say that they have chapters, that isn't necessarily like they have a definite end, like, after 15 chapters, the story is going to be done. It's just that, you know, they, they're approaching it in a different structured way. Yeah. And there'll definitely be lulls and peaks no matter what. I'm just saying though, that, you know, when you're talking about a manga that's been running longer than I've been alive, like that's a lot, a lot of content <laughs> that, that has to be at least somewhat good, you know? Hey, Gabib, what's up, man? How's it going? Uh, there's no obtrusive sub notification because I don't want one. I'm still playing around with a lot of the stuff uh, with the changes here. Like I said, this is a kind of an experiment for me. Uh, an experiment in uh, engagement and interactivity. I'm going to be changing some stuff. Uh, I'm probably... And don't tell Erica unless she's still here. I might add some background music. We shall, we'll see. I'm still considering what I want to do with that. Part of the problem is, is that uh, I don't want the YouTube VODs to be muted. Uh, and I prefer them not to be fr like copyright flagged. So I'm going to have to do some more research into some stuff. Um, it, yeah, I agree, Gabib. Uh, it is... 100% intimidating to start reading a story that has 60 volumes. Uh, I find the easiest way for something like that is if you saw like one specific storyline or had a jumping off point that wasn't necessarily the beginning. So you could kind of get into it. Um, that always helps. That's one of the reasons why Marvel and DC kind of fail because it's so hard for new readers to get into it um, because you all you like almost have to know like hundreds of years of comic book history to read Batman because there are so many things that are relevant that aren't even in the current continuity and stuff like it just it's really weird um, I'm doing great Gabby thanks for asking man um, so yeah Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to take a break now, uh, approximately five minute break, uh, get up, stretch my legs, uh, but I will be back and uh, yeah, I'll come up with something cool to start the next. Uh... To start the next segment, but yeah, cool. <laughs> I got nothing. Sorry. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> 